Yo, what up? Welcome back to another episode of Caleb's Prostate Exam. Bend over. Salutations and good tidings, fellow scholars. Tonight we're going to be f***ing up some ectochrome. So the cool thing about Kodak's new ectochrome is that on the Kodak Alaris spreadsheet, it says that you don't have to compensate for reciprocity up to 10 seconds. So what does that mean for us when we shoot night photography? It means anything is possible. But tonight I'm going to be shooting with my sweet baby Mamiya 7 and a Tiffin black chromist filter at one quarter. So it's it's not bad. It's not beefy. Oh shit, that looks so cool. Yeah. That's so yeah. Cool. So that's so the... cool. Take out the dark slide. This thing's like a baby. Dude, I'm like, is it for Caleb? Because that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey there, uh, this isn't your conscious speaking. This is just Jason from the future. So these were shot at a store that had a black light display out front. Now, I don't know a whole lot about black lights, but what I do know is that they're often used in movies to reveal why a cheap hotel bed is sticky, and it's usually never blood or urine. Initially, I was concerned that a uh, black light might exist somewhere on the light spectrum that some films don't register. And while that might be the case, it seems like Ektachrome actually rendered the scene quite well, in my opinion, until I looked back at the footage, and then I kind of noticed there's a bit of a disparity between the colors. Ektachrome seems to have rendered the purple black light a bit more blue than it naturally appeared to the naked eye. So I guess keep that in mind if you're going to go shoot any black light raves anytime soon. Yes, you are. Really? Yeah. That close? Bet you 50 bucks. 25 bucks. Dude, there's like no room. So 
know that that is so close to us. Not a good idea. This is an interesting shot, you know, if you're boring and film photography excites you, which is the truest definition of me. The shot is notable because there's a lot of mixed lighting in frame, and let's just say Ektachrom took some artistic liberties with the colors. I mean, look at this LED light. It's so goddamn turquoise. Most of the Ektachrom shots had a purple slash blue cast to them, but for some reason this shot rendered a load of cyan. So I guess what I'm saying is, watch out for those LED lights when you're shooting Ektachrom, unless you are already planning on blasting your image with cyan anyway then you're good. All right, so the $13 question on everyone's mind, is Ektachrome a good film to shoot at night? Well, yes and no, mostly yes, I think. Though the dynamic range on Ektachrome is actually pretty good, it's still a color positive film, so it'll never be able to compete 100% with color negative film. Although Cinestill did come out with some chemicals recently for Ektachrome that kind of seem to magically do the impossible, so. We'll see how that develops. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Ektachrome is actually quite special because you don't need to adjust for reciprocity if your exposure is less than 10 seconds long. Wow, that's incredible. 10 seconds. I don't even brush my teeth that long, you may be thinking. Yeah, it's pretty cool. An added bonus is that Ektachrome is actually damn near grainless. And yeah, while I did swear an oath to be grainy until the day that I meet my accidental volcano death, more on that later, we'll just have to pretend like this grainlessness never happened. Now, as you can probably tabulate, nighttime scenes are quite contrasty depending on what you're shooting. For example, if you're shooting a light in an alleyway, you may have to decide whether you want to expose for the highlights or the shadows. Another nighttime example would be if you're shooting through someone's bathroom window and you decide to expose yourself, in which case you should probably probably go to jail. So yeah, I think in the end, Ektachrome is actually pretty rad to shoot in the evening. The only problem you might run into is if your exposure time goes over 10 seconds, you may have to do some guesswork or experimentation with the reciprocity in that case. And of course, the last downside is that if any other film photographers see you shooting Ektachrome at night, they may try and rob you because it ain't cheap. <laughs>